Welcome to Tracy Davies' new studio. I'm Betty Healy and I'm doing yet again another interview for the 25th Appleson Art Tour. And what's the address here, Tracy? We are at 113 Pitt Street in downtown Cornwall. And this is like kind of like a new opening for you. It is. It's we're we're sort of doing a pop up studio gallery right now just to be able to show at least for some of the festivals and for Apples and Art. Uh, we're in the process of purchasing the building, so we have a lot of renos coming up, and mm -hmm. we're not ready to open yet. Um, so we're basically Sandra and I, who's my partner in this. We're just setting up a little spot so people can come and see us and see what we're what we're doing, and we're mm -hmm. also going to be providing. Um, Supplies. Oh, great. So, so, supplies. so this is important because other than, uh, you know, the, the normal big retail in Cornwall, art supplies are not that readily available. So this would be a second location where people can come to, very conveniently located to. That's right. Right downtown on the main street. And we're going to try to give them really good prices because it's quite expensive to do art. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we want to support the artists with whatever they need. So I've been surveying talking to a lot of people and, and trying to figure out what their needs are to be a bit more specific with Excellent. what we bring in. So, yeah. so tell us a little bit about your art and uh, it, it, what medium you use and what inspires you. Um, well my artwork, as an example here, is mostly abstract, mostly abstract mixed media and I like to use a lot of um, stones, sand, glass, cardboard, um, this one here is called View from a Frosty Window, so it, it, you're kind of looking out a window at what might be a uh, forest or whatever the, whatever the viewer sees in my art. You never know. People come up with different uh, ideas, so lots of different color and dripping and uh, sometimes I'll use um, stencils, aluminum foil, anything that I find that I can put into my paint is, is uh, pretty much what I'll do. Um, and I don't like, I tend not to paint with a lot of um, plants. I'm very intuitive. I'll just put the paint onto the canvas and, and see what I see come out of it and build from there. Um, sometimes I'll sit down with an idea, mm -hmm. but usually I'll just get the paint, get the paint on. Yeah. Uh, a lot of artists um, have that white canvas fear factor where they look at the white canvas and they think, oh gosh. So I don't I don't do this. I will just intuitively I'll just put paint on and then spray it with water. It'll drip and I'll I'll just see what I can make out of it. You just let it happen. Let it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's much more stress relieving than sitting down with intent to do something specific. And so <laughs> when you see this along here, for example, you would have sprayed this and this would have kind of rolled down the canvas. That would have made it. Is that how that yeah. happened? Yeah. What I did is I did an under an undercoating. I had done. Uh, of blues and I spackled a lot of different uh, shades of blue and I put some black and you can see I did some stamping with a napkin roll in the background there's a lot there's some silver in there there's some dark green and then what I did is I took a cake an icing knife mm -hmm. I used to call it a type of very large palette knife yeah and I scraped paint along and then I sprayed it to let it run and I painted I put a very light blue and then I sprayed it and I let it run and then at one point I found an old box that was packed and it had some styrofoam in it that was perfectly cut squares. So I just took the squares and dabbed them into paint and printed what I thought might kind of look like brick perhaps. And I had some stones that I mixed into the paint and I just, I just started applying it until I think it's done and it's ready. And to me it just looked like a frosted mm -hmm. window view. <laughs> And I'm so, I'm so thankful that you actually shared how you uh, created that because I think that um, people who aren't in the art world get sort of used to a certain, well, they may be attracted to a certain style of painting as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're finding in our, in our interviews with people is that many are like yourself, they're more intuitive by nature, that when you sit down in front of the canvas, and I like that, you said white canvas fear factor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I often have that where I go, now what? And then you yeah. just, if you just can let it go and just pick, do something and get one, because the nice thing about acrylic, of course, is you can layer and, and, and what oh, yes. you start with is not always going to be what no. you end with. And, and the beautiful thing about it is, I don't, some people say, well, you're wasting paint. Do you feel like you've just used a lot of product? And I, and I don't because it gives me so much more texture. I could show you an example of something. This guy here, he's a bit whimsical, but you can see how much 
this is cotton, a big chunk of cotton I had put in there, and this this was a, another painting before, and I was just so unhappy with it, but I loved all the texture that I had in there, so I didn't want to waste it. So I started to build it, build it, build it, and I saw a bit of a flower, and so I added the petals, a little bit of bubble wrap, I dripped some paint to give it some a bit more detail, and then I sprayed on some of my um, stencils. I have thousands of stencils. I even make my own stencils because mm -hmm. I just love the effect it gives to paintings. Mm -hmm. And my fingers, I dab on paint, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and then I went around the edges with a creamy gelato to give it kind of a, mm -hmm. a soft edge, a soft edge, and around here to give some shading with more gelatos, and then I spray varnish it to protect it. And this has been. This is so thick of product, but not wasted. No. I mean, certainly it adds to the... And I love what you said, you know, that, that like here with the, the cotton in here, because I often use uh, a lot of tissue paper, as you know, with my paintings. But also, I, I would have never thought of using bubble wrap as an example to give texture, or as you said here, like styrofoam yeah. as a stencil. I mean, yeah. it's just very innovative. I, I don't throw anything out. I use um, instant coffee mixed in with wet paint, it, and it gives us a beautiful brown, and it's, there's so many things you can use in the kitchen, rock salt, mm -hmm. um, I use screens, um, you can use fishnet nylons to do really neat uh, mm -hmm. prints, there's so much you can use at home. And I didn't know what to do with them, I always <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw anything out! Don't throw anything out! Now, if I say that to my husband, he's going to be going, Anne, how much space were you planning to take up for this endeavor? <laughs> That's right. Well, th this is great, Tracy, and I'm sure people will, this is, a, I want to say to everyone, a beautiful space in here, even though it's, you, you say it's not, it's like just a, a beginning, right? Yes. I have a beautiful space to come and visit, visit. and again, the address on Pitt is? 113. 113 Pitt Street, uh, between 1st and 2nd. And uh, this will be one of the the 26 sites for the Apples and Art, the 25th uh, anniversary of the Apples and Art Tour. Thank you so much, Tracy, oh, for sharing you. it with us. Thank you, Betty.